Do you want to play one of the easiest, most straightforward and probably funnest spec in the game? Beast Mastery Hunter is for you because it does have a unique playstyle that no other spec in the game has. And I believe it's an interesting, definitely one of the best entry level specs for everybody going into higher end content. It's just a really good spec for both raids and dungeons. If you don't believe us, watch our tier lists and I will prove it to you. This video and all of the guys that we do on our channel are supported and sponsored by our Patreons. They make this possible and also have been one of the main people who have asked for the guys to be back. Hopefully you will enjoy it. And if you like the content, you want to see more guides on more specs, maybe something that you like or maybe want to play, consider checking our Patreon link down in the description. There's obviously a bunch of goodies that you can get to different tiers of support. We appreciate and love you guys for all of the support that you show us and couldn't be more grateful. Thank you very much. Now let's get into the actual spec. Now there are a lot of misconceptions and maybe actual conceptions about Beast Mastery that could probably be well to be put out there. There are a lot of positives for the spec. It's, like I mentioned, very easy to pick up and it's not very punishing if you mess it up. That's probably why most raid leaders tend to choose this to be their spec of choice because, like I mentioned before, it is a good spec when you want to focus on mechanics, focus on what the game has to do if you want to learn the actual PvE encounters. It has very high mobility and sustained damage. It's literally the only spec that can continuously cast and move with no impediment whatsoever, unless you take the Wailing Arrow Talon, which is like one thing. Everything else is basically done on the move. It has also uncapped AoE, which if you like to play Mythic Plus or big, big, big pools open world, this is really fun because there's no limit to how many targets you can hit, which feels very nice. It also has a huge utility kit Pretty much everything you might need, excepting a Battle Resurrect. Aspect of the Turtle, which provides immunity for anything that's not already a dot on you or something you step in. Most ground effects are unaffected by Turtle, as it is a shield above and around you, not under you. Though so it saves you and your friends in those situations where it does work. Disengage offers quick gateways on a 20 second cooldown and a 50% speed buff, if specced into the post haste talent. Also incredibly useful for dispelling dots that also have a snare or root effect. There is an example in Halls of Infusion where you have Containment Beam from the Apparatus or Deep Chill from the Dragons also works for the entangling affix that's new this Mythic Plus season. Feign Death helps you drop combat, can even reset raid bosses and many abilities targeted on you get cancelled by pressing this button thus ignoring deadly raid or dungeon mechanics. Some of the examples, again, the apparatus in Halls of Infusion or the first boss in Brackenhide where it has the Savage Charge ability. Freezing Trap is an excellent CC for ad fights in both Raid and Mythic Plus, especially since it can be precast on the location. Freehold, the last boss adds, for instance, Halls of Infusion, last boss adds for interrupting the beam and dealing with the ad later. Trapping as that teleport to a position before they do a dangerous attack, the incorporeal affix dealing with the ads in this current encounter, <sighs> and a lot more. And you have even more utility to add on top of all of this. Tranquilizing shot that dispels in rage, tar trap for AoE slows, flare for revealing stealth mobs, camouflage provides long lasting stealth for you and your pets, binding shot for keeping enemies in place for a short time. Wailing Arrow for AoE silence, incredible. There's also pet utility. Alongside many things a certain pet can do in a fight from tanking for a while to stunning, providing a slow fall for the hunter, water walking, a small heal or providing reduced damage received effectiveness to enemies. I'm looking at you, Assault of the Zakali. Ferocity pets give hunters the primal rage ability, the bloodlust ability and 10% leech. Tenacity pets provide max health and a 20% damage reduction spell on a 3 minute cooldown with survival of the fittest. On top of this, you will also get Fortitude of the Bear, 20% health increase and heal. Cunning pets provide movement speed and removal of movement impairing effects on itself and on an ally with Master's Call. It does have some negatives, of course, as with anything anywhere. It's Pretty squishy, all things considered. You have a long cooldown on your defensives or heals compared to other classes. It has low to almost no burst damage. Pets don't deal with the door mechanic properly because they haven't been taught at pet school. 
platforms and sometimes just forget to attack because, you know, eh, eh. Often it is called a three button spec due to its simplicity and as such is continuously underestimated in terms of its overall performance, which not actually a negative, community perception can sometimes impact how you join groups and do other content. But with that out of the way, talents are also an important gateway into getting your BM quick and easy, slapping those dungeons and bosses. BM hunters usually have two used talent trees, the single target and the AoE with preference variation for utility. Camouflage, Wailing Arrow, Pathfinding, Trailblazer, etc. There are also small variations for a raid AoE spec and a hybrid spec with some extra single target. And you can find their loadouts linked in the description below. For the single target spec generally used in the raid, you will have Bloodshed and Dire Beast along with Dire Frenzy and Dire Pack. While in an AoE situation, you will drop these talents and spec into Multishot, Beast Cleave, Kill Cleave and Brutal Companion. The hybrid spec will keep some talents from each of the previous ones, specking into Multi-Shot, Beast Cleave, Kill Cleave, Dire Frenzy and Dire Pack. Once again, all of these talents are linked in the description, you can just copy and import them in your game quick and easy. Now, once you have your talents, what gear should you go for? Well, as always, um, if you want to have the best options out there, you will have to sim yourself since your stats may slightly change. If you do want the absolute best of the best of the best of the best and you sim yourself on raidbots.com. However, there is a stat priority that you can follow. Agility obviously will be the best that to go for, so usually higher eye level is always going to be better if that higher eye level comes with agility. Not all pieces of gear have agility. Haste crit would ideally be the next on your list of priority, kind of really close to mastery as well, so even if you do get a little bit of mastery, it's not the end of the world, while versatility is poop. As such, for your consumables, starting with the gems, again, sim. Otherwise, if uh, you cannot be bothered with third-party applications, you can get Inscribed Limited Diamond, which you can only have one of, and then Crafty Semerald or Crafty Alexstrasite. For Crist, haste things. Your alchemy consumables will be Iced File of Corrupting Rage, if you can keep good uptime on the proc, but it will do quite some damage to you, so keep an eye out for those procs. Or go for the simple, safer version, File of Tepid Versatility. Elemental Potion of Ultimate Power is of course your best DPS potion out there. For your food, feasts are obviously the best, fortune cookie or deviously deviled eggs are all pretty much the same thing. Moving on to the enchants, don't forget that your necklace can be setted with the tiered medallion setting to add additional sockets up to 3. Your weapon should be enchanted with high intensity thermal scanner and complexity safe rockets. Your cloak will have graceful avoidance. For your chest, get waking stats. For your belt, shadowed belt clasp. Devotion of avoidance for bracers. Fierce armor kit for legs. For your boots, get planes runner's breeze for movement speed or watcher's loam for stamina. While the rings can have any of the devotion of haste, mastery or critical strike. And as for embellishments, cause they are really good. Shadow flame tempered armor patch with haste crits. Acidic Hailstone Treads, which are leatherworking crafted boots that slow you by 10%. As for your actual best in slot, the weapon is the most important upgrade you can get, and crafted ones allow you to pick your stats and upgrade to 447 item level, which is also the highest item level you can get even in the raid on Mythic difficulty. So, all Smokey from Engineering or Bow of the Dragon Hunter from Leatherworking are your best choices. If you don't want to craft, from M+, you can get Lightning Flash from the Vortex Pinnacle Dungeon, which can upgrade to 441, or get lucky and get it in your vault for 447. The raid also drops two weapons, Brutal Dragon Slayer's Trophy at 441 on Mythic, and Failure Disposal Cannon at 447 eye level. Neither of them is better than a 447 Lightning Flash or a crafted weapon with the correct stats. As for the trinkets, Harlan's Loaded Dice from Freehold makes its return in the S tier category. Along with the ominous chromatic essence, if you have at least two friends who also have this. Along with these two, Dragonfire Bomb Dispenser is also best in slot when it comes to single target situations, but drops down when it comes to AoE. A quick disclaimer, if you're still starting to gear your Beastmaster Hunter and you don't have that high eye level yet, you can still get the Onyx Annulet Ring with 
some of the better stones out there. For single target specifically, you will want Prophetic Twilight Stone, Freezing Ice Stone, and Desirious Blood Stone. While for multi-target and AoE, Mythic Plus, things like that, you will want still Prophetic Twilight Stone, Storm Infused Stone this time, and still the same Bloodstone as before. And now let's check the actual rotation. <laughs> you might think it's pretty simple, but it's a little bit, but it's not that. First of all, in single target, you will open with two barb shots, after which you will use your Bloodshed, Bestial Wrath, fire your kill command, use another barb shot, another kill command, Death Chakram and Dire Beast, and after this you generally proceed to your normal rotation according to your priority list. And that priority list in single target sees Barb Shot as the most important thing to use, first of all to refresh your frenzy just before it falls off ideally, and also to dump all of your charges if your Bishal Wrath is about to come off cooldown. The next thing you need to do is make sure that Kill Command does not cap on the two charges, so press it. And of course, use Death Chakram on cooldown, Bloodshed on cooldown, Bestial Wrath on cooldown, Kill Shot on cooldown, and after you use all of this, Kill Command on cooldown is next on the priority, and even lower down in the priority, you will use Barb Shot again if your first charge has just finished recharging, and you're going into the second one and there's nothing else better to do, press Barb Shot. Keep in mind that this also reduces the cooldown of Bestial Wrath, so if consuming all of your Barb Shot, would get it ready, then use all of them again. And last but not least, Dire Beast on cooldown and Cobra Shot whenever there's nothing else to do. In AoE, the opener is similar to the single target, but you do add multi shot in between your other casts to keep Beast Cleave up. So you start with multi shot to get that Beast Cleave up. You use two of your barb shots on ideally different targets to spread the bleed. Bestial Wrath next, multi shot again, kill command. Barb Shot again on ideally a third target, Kill Command once again, then use Multi Shot, Death Chakram, Kill Command again, and Wailing Arrow unless you need it for an interrupt. And after this, of course, you will proceed to the normal priority rotation, which sees you use Barb Shot to refresh Frenzy when it's just about to fall off just in the last second. And as mentioned in the opener, you ideally want to spread the dot from Barb Shot to as many targets as possible, so tap targeting is usually ideal. Next on the priority list is Multi Shot to apply and maintain Beast Cleave up on your pet as much as possible, and you will, similar to Frenzy, want to refresh this as late as possible to have maximum value in your globals. Make sure that Kill Command never caps on charges, and similar to before, Keep your cooldowns on cooldown. That is Death Chakram and Bishal Wrath on top of everything we mentioned so far. Right after keeping Bishal Wrath on cooldown, Barb Shot becomes again a priority ability to use if your first charge has just finished refreshing or if by overcasting Barb Shot would also reset the cooldown on Bishal Wrath again. Once again, Kill Command on cooldown is ideal. Kill Shot on cooldown as well in execute phases. Use Cobra Shot when you have more than 80 focus remaining so you don't cap on focus. And once again, Wailing Arrow on cooldown for the damage unless you want to keep it for a specific interrupt situation. Overall, be it single target or AoE, there are a couple of general things that you need to keep in mind for your rotation to be as smooth and as efficient and consistent as possible. Ideally, you want to always, always, always keep Frenzy at 3 stacks as much as possible, so refresh them late, but not too late. Keep Kill Command on cooldown all the time. Use all of your other cooldowns like Death Chakram, Bloodshed and Bestial Wrath when they become available again as much as possible and don't delay them more than just a few seconds if your aim is to pair them up. And for an extra increase in DPS you can and should macro your pet abilities to your spells by using this into your Barb Shots, Kill Command, Cobra Shot macros and so on and so forth. This will make sure that your pet will always be on your target, especially when you swap target for that maximum pet uptime, because <laughs> pet AI. <laughs> pet AI. <laughs> and a lot of people might be wondering about this, but your tier set does not change your rotation priority or your talent choices. The two set simply improves Cobra Shot and Kill Command by 15%, while the four set reduces the cooldown on Bestial Wrath by 2 seconds for each 
Cobra Shot, Kill Command and Multi Shot Fired. So the only way this changes things is that you have your mini cooldown back even more than before. And with this we conclude everything that you need to pick up your Beast Mastery, go into dungeons, get those loot bosses in the raids and start slapping. Obviously we covered more of the basic and pick up stuff really quick. There's a lot more to go into the advanced sections of Beast Mastery if you really want to optimize and have the best of the best damage. You can of course check the True Shot Lodge Discord channel which has all of the hunter information that you ever want. The theory crafters there have amazing written guides on icy veins and wowhead that you can also check for additional information. Once again, thank you patrons for supporting the content. Hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wow Still, I play wow Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wow Still, I play wow It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wow